Good to see everyone here tonight. Um, we had a low crowd last week, but everyone's back. Thank you for being faithful. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about children and raising them, right? <laughs> children and raising them. Um, it's interesting we have our class. We have some, some older, some younger, some with, you know, no kids, some grandparents. And, uh, but it's, it's important, right? It's important. And these, these lessons and all these lessons, I think a lot of the guys, things you, you understand, you know. But I think it's, the, as the Bible says, iron sharpening iron, right? Things you know already. And how, how, how do you sharpen? How do you sharpen something if you have a knife? Man, the old steel I think my grandmother, she'd just get this thing and just, just like, like a wild woman with a steel on the knife, you know, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It, but it's, it's, it, it's re repetition, repetition, and that's where we're at, you know. So a lot of this is, is stuff that's, that you know, some things that, uh, so maybe you can apply it right away. Maybe it's something that you can stuff away, help out with grandkids, whatever it is, whatever the case is. But um, well, that's where we're at tonight. Um, so it's interesting that the same sun produces different results on different substances, right? So it hardens, it hardens clay, um, how it's been so dry here, man, it really hardens the ground, right? You're trying to plant something, it was, it was hardening, but it hardens, the sun hardens clay and it melts ice, the same sun. How about the, the sun, the same sun promotes health in humans, right? It promotes health, the vitamin D, there's, no, there's nothing better. Then some sun on your body, you just your bodies crave it, right? Not too much, but it's, you know. But it's the same thing. It, it's helpful to us, and it kills germs. On the other hand, it tans skin. It tans skin. It bleaches out clothes, right? It's the same thing. It's the same thing as we think about um, with children in a marriage. It either it either galvanizes a couple or drives them apart, right? It, and it, 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 it either galvanizes them or drives them apart. It seems like um, we've been in the honeymooners class for some years, and some people get married, and they're kind of, well, whatever, about church and stuff. But then children come, like, oh, hey, hey, we got to kick it in gear here. We, we, we got kids. We got, they're, they're looking at us, right? It either, it either galvanizes or, then, or the fussing starts. Or the fussing starts, <clears throat> and uh, that's not the thing. And because remember, what, what is the goal? What is our goal in marriage class? One Oneness, one flesh. Exactly. That's where we're at. And it, and it's it's not in, in it's in everything and everything, even raising kids. So just like many other things in our marriage, um, there's a bunch of room. There's a bunch of things. A bunch of room. Uh, for disagreement, for from having kids in the first place, are we going to have some? When are we going to have them? You know, two years down the road, the people start with this. Oh, well, we're, when we're financially set, right? Then we're going to have kids. Well, good luck with that one, right? We're still, we still wait. We'd be still waiting, right? We're gonna, but uh, you know, it, it's just, it's just having a number of kids, right? Agreeing on a number of kids. Big family or the perfect thing, one boy and one girl, you know, that, that, whole, that whole idea. But it's probably the biggest conflict in marriage is how to raise them, right? Is raising, our, raising the kids. Um, a lot of that's based on um, your parents, based on when you got saved, right? Here's somebody who's, who's been saved, grew up in the church, somebody else has just got saved, and they come together and what we're gonna do what you're gonna you know there's 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 plenty of room there's plenty of room for for uh some conflict there um parents of what what are your parents what were your parents you know, believers non-believers uh maybe you were raised uh by um different than your spouse maybe you're raised different things um you have different norms right you have different norms the strict uh, or a permissive family um, maybe you had a big, loud, in-your-face kind of family, or you were the toast, just real quiet, and maybe there's those kind of things. You're raised by that. Uh, maybe maybe your parents were really regimented. I mean, just boom, boom, boom. All right, hey, it's seven o'clock. Boom, out the door. Da, da, you know, maybe you were that kind of thing, or but or the time and a place for everything. Others had no structure at all. Kids just kind of raise themselves, right? Figure it out. You take a we take a ride. Uh, you take a ride down through the Amish country, and not the commercial Amish country, but like down by Ashland, down there they're poor, they're they're barefoot running around. You know, you will uh, Colleen and I will take a motorcycle ride. We'll take a ride in the evenings. You know, we'll go down through there, and you see them out in the fields. 
little, I mean, the big to the little, they're all out there working. I mean, they're working, working hard in the garden, hacking away, they're barefoot and they're hacking away with big sickles and all this kind of stuff, you know. There, people are being raised like that, or you could roll through Avon or somewhere like that and you see how kids are being raised there. Everything, they got everything, right? So there's different, <clears throat> there's plenty of differences. But what's the right way, right? How about this? What's your philosophy? What's your philosophy for raising kids, concerning raising kids? Um, honestly, what, what what was yours? Some of you guys that have already had children, your your children children are out. What was your what was your you know philosophy? Um, I know at some points it was just survival, right? Make it through the day. That was a, that's a goal, right? Um, but, but what what is it? What but as a, as a Christian parent, obviously obviously we're in this class we know our basic strategy is you know is uh you know to raise him for the lord obviously but that's the basic idea but it takes work right it takes dedication con- consistency so maybe we get lazy maybe we resort to yelling <laughs> empty the, the em- empty threats um the 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 we're driven by don't embarrass me right just don't embarrass me kind of thing uh uh the peer pressure there's a lot of peer pressure. It's not just a junior high thing, but it's it's adults. It's it's young married. Oh, oh, little my little Johnny is taking piano lessons at two years old, and well, well then, well my, you know, there's there's that peer pressure, right? So, but what's the, what's the philosophy? What is the idea? Um, it's easy to it's easy to lose track, right? Of your goals uh, as a couple, it's easy to do that. So here here's a here's an example. Here's Dad Wednesday night after the service. You got kids got small kids dad's yucking it up with some buddies and you know after the service they're talking talking and he's just and he's just glad to see a friend or whatever but it's kind of getting late and mom in her mind it's bedtime it's gonna be bedtime and those kids have to be in bed right so here's dad in dad's mind like hey a couple minutes late, 15 minutes late, what's the big deal? But mom, she's got to deal with them in the morning, and man, I got to register, you know. So we have these things. What's happening? You're not on the same page. That's exactly what's happening. They're not unified, and it's not good. So we as Christian couples, we need to be unified for raising kids, right? Finances, communication, raising kids, um, all those things, that's where, we're, that's where we need to be. We really need to be on the same page and have God's word as the final authority. I, I don't think anybody in the room would, uh, would disagree with that. But it's listen, it's not your ideas. It's not our past experiences, not our friends, not our parents, some guy on the internet, but it's God's word. God's word has to be that, right? And we, I think we would all agree with that. But then when, when push comes to shove, sometimes we just kind of lay, we kind of swerve out of the, out of the way. But God's word has to stay up front and keep us on course. Um, it's not just for when we have toddlers, we do, we do it God's way, or teens when it's panic time, or when the kids are out of the house. You always have to have, have that guide as it's God's way. His word is the goal. His, his word is the philosophy. His word has the standards. There's no need to follow the latest trends in parenting. Uh, raise them how you feel. It should be. Um, the problem with all that stuff is it changes, right? It changes. It changes. Um, God's word doesn't change. Right, Malachi three six. I am the Lord. I change not. Right. That's that's the God we have. That's the God we serve. Um, His word does not change, and that's where we need to be. We, you can't like, uh, you know, we have we have three adult kids, and uh, you can't be looking back and thinking, oh man, what what was I thinking? I was following the Doctor Spock book right to the T. I did everything that you know. We we can't go back. You can't go back. You're done. But if we can say, all right, listen, we tried the best we could to do what God had, God's word says. We tried to do the best. We look back and you can rest on that, right? You can rest there. Yeah. You can rest there because God's word does not change. Um, Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. That's, that's, that was good for then and it's still good for now. It's still good. Let that be the guide for us, us raising children, right? The husband and wife relying on God's word. It settles the differences of opinion, right? It settles conflict. It settles questions. 
that is it. That's the standard. Let's, let's just decide right now. You young folks are just getting just got married. That's the standard. Let's let that let that be your guide, right? Let it be the final authority. Something that will stand the test of time. Something that we can look back on in life, and we can honestly say we did the best, right? Um, uh, so this author, our author in, in our book here, Strength in Our Marriage, um, he has it. He pulls this. He pulls this a different thing out of one verse. And what do we always say about you can't put one verse? But look, let's look in Ephesians chapter six, and verse four. It's one verse. It's one verse, and it's not. He's not twisting anything. He's not pulling it out of context. Ephesians six four. It, 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 and it has a different take on this. It has. It pulls everything right here. Here's a philosophy. Here's a standard. Here's what we should do. What we shouldn't do. But Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4 says this, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Simple thing, right? It's a simple thing. Um, now what do, we know, uh, what, is, what do we know about God's commands to us? What do we know about God's commands? He speaks to our weakness. When he gives a command, it's for a reason. And he, he speaks to us, it's, it's directly to our weakness. And that's exactly what's happening here. He calls out the fathers. 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 Our, our, obviously, our society is crumbling away. Sin is a, major, is a major deal. A large part of what's happening in our society is just a lack of leadership. And the leadership should be the men. It's a lack of leadership. Um, a lack, lack of absence in the home. I mean, right? Uh, I mean, it's just, Statistics we could go on and on. I just found this one. It said 85% of this is a this is just like a month ago. They did this re- research thing from one a month ago, not 20 years, but right now, 85% of delinquency, you know, youth crime, it all comes from a home with no father. 85%. So those 85% of all these kids are just out of control. What do you think is going to happen when they're not in youth? Now they're 20 years old. They're going to just follow right, you know, that, that's where we're at. It's astounding, and I can go on and on in facts and figures. You, you guys all know that. And, and, but we're not talking about my opinion or, uh, or some preacher speaking, you know. Sometimes they get, <clears throat> uh, but it's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Dads, our kids need us, right? Dads, our kids need us. Even if your kids are grown, they still need you. They still need you to, to lean to lean, you know, yeah, you're, they're a man, right? They're a man now. Well, you're, they still need you. You know, they want to still look up at a dad and a, and a mom. Hey, there's something going on in our, in our country, in our world. There's election, this and that. The kids still want to look up and say, hey, hey, what, is, what does dad think about this? What does mom think about this, right? They need you, right? They, they need you. Uh, dads, our kids need us, right? They still need us. Um, grandpas, grandpas in the room, uh, what a great opportunity we have. You know, I get it. You know, your kids, a, a son and a dad, there's always there's some friction, right? But who doesn't like a grandpa? Who doesn't like your grandpa? I mean, come on. I usually have a raise of hands, but who doesn't like your grandpa, right? But, I mean, we, it's, this is the best gig and yet. You pick your spots. You show up. You have an activity. You plan something. You teach a lesson. And you have them give them some food, and boom, you're out. It's, it's the best. I'm not kidding you. Just wait. Just wait. It's, it's the best. It's, it's great. But listen, God gave kids parents for a reason. For a reason. Train them. Show them the way. Right? Show them the way. So, so we're, we're talking here in, in Ephesians 6, 4, and in ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Fathers. He's getting after the fathers. Um, but moms... Moms, you, you don't get, you have a vital role in this too. Remember the Ten Commandments: honor thy father and thy mother. Let's look at uh, Proverbs chapter one. Proverbs one eight. Can somebody read that one? Proverbs one eight. Who has it? Yeah, Gibby. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. Right, <clears throat> exactly. Hear the instruction of thy father, forsake not the law of thy mother. So, uh, so the Bible is clear. And this is not just dad, you do this, and moms are off the hook. Um, Proverbs six twenty says exactly the same thing. Um, 
it says the same thing. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were down in we were down uh, we were down in Tennessee on a fair wedding, and uh, on the way back, we decided, hey, let's go the back roads. It took forever, but it was nice. It was really nice. We're going along and say, hey, here's Ab- Abraham Lincoln's birthplace somewhere in Kentucky, and so so we pulled in there. Nice place to stretch out, you know, stretch your legs, and we look around. And in that in that thing was a museum on Abraham Lincoln, and there there was the family Bible. This thing was like boom, it was a monster. It was a family Bible that it was an actual thing. It was sitting under glass and all that stuff that he wrote on. And I think of I think of him, a, a leader that he was. And man, would to God we had a leader like that now. And you could see his humble beginnings and his and and you know his basis was on the Bible, right? And the, the the tragedy that he ha- that happened in his life, but he had he had this one quote. And I think you probably heard it. Um, he had a quote. He said, "All that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother, my dear angel mother." That was his that was his quote. Um, she died when he was nine, but that that was his quote for his mom. He always gave all the credit to his mom for all those things. What a, what an impression that she made on him. What a difference, right? What a difference she made in his life. Um, so you moms, your moms in here, you play a huge role in raising your kids. It's a huge thing. Uh, a mom probably has more opportunities, uh, more opportunities for direct influence in your kids. Um, probably your more teachable moments just by default, right? Probably just by default. It's usually the mom that has that privilege of staying home, raising those kids it's in those important early years. It's such a such an important such an important thing. Um, Think of some examples from the Bible, right? If we think of Hannah and Samuel, we know that one. Um, the struggle for a child. Years. Years. 10 years? 15 years? The Bible, I don't think it says, but there was somebody that said it was like 19 years she was struggling to have a baby, right? And she couldn't. She never did. She finally, <clears throat> she finally received that message from the prophet Eli, right? Your prayer will be answered. Um, do you think once she had that little boy, do you think she wasted one second in her life, you know, preparing him, training him, teaching him, pouring into him. You think she wasted anything? I don't think so. I don't think she did at all. Um, she, she, before she gave him back to the Lord. You think of, we, we all know Lois and Eunice, a, a mom and a grandma raising young Timothy. Moms, you make a difference. You make a difference. Even if it seems like those kids aren't listening, sometimes it doesn't seem like they're listening at all. They're listening. It matters. It matters. What you're doing is matters. Um, it, it really matters. You know, like I said, we have the three grown children, and, and they'll play this game of, hey, remember when we did this? Remember? And like, I, honestly, I don't. Even, some, some of the things I don't even remember. But it made a difference on them. And, oh, man, it was the best. It was the best, right? And we, we hear these things. Then we have some other things that we're not even going to talk about in this setting. But, but, uh, but, but seriously, um, it matters. It matters what we're doing. They're listening. It matters. So, so um, it, in Ephesians 6, 4, it says, But ye fathers, right? But ye fathers. Um, Jay Adams in, in the book, um, who's got, anybody got the book? Let me get the book. Um, on page 145, he talks about the, the why, why um, Paul here says about ye fathers. He, gets, he sticks it to the fathers. Um, page 145, uh, 2A, down the bottom, it says this. J. Adams said this, When Paul speaks to the fathers, he is speaking to the mothers. The reason that he addresses the fathers is that what the mothers do, the fathers are responsible for. In addressing the father, he is addressing the one in whom God has vested his authority for discipline. The father is the head of the home, right? The father is the head of the home. The father is the one that who ultimately must answer to God for what happens in the home. That's the that's the bottom line for sure, and that's probably <laughs> that's that's what's going on. So, fellas, the buck stops with us in our home. And that, that's that's the bottom line of this thing. Um, it's probably because the Lord saw this down way down the line. There's a there's a philosophy as well. The husband says, "Well, I'll make the money, and you raise the kids." I think we've all heard that kind of thing. Um, now you make the money and take care of you know put a roof over the hit over their heads and put gas in the tank and all that kind of stuff. Pay for the food. Yes, that's that's part of it, but that's not all of it. That's not all of it at all, right? It's not God's plan for this for that to happen. The husband and wife working together as one flesh. Let's look in. Let's look in. This is interesting in First Timothy chapter three. 
First Timothy chapter three. And here's the requirements for a bishop or pastor or overseer, right? Um, First Timothy chapter three and verse one it says this: This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. So that's the that's the that's the pastor, the overseer. Um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, let's drop down to verse uh, four and five. And it says this: uh, One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So here's the, reading the requirements for a preacher, for a pastor, for this overseer. It talks about what what should be, what should be the house, what should, what what the house should look like. That so drop down to verse twelve. Talks about the deacons. Um, in verse 12, it says this, Let the deacons be husband of one wife, ruling their children and their house as well. Same, same kind of thing. That's what God expects for a home. This is the idea, right? A home where a husband and wife... Now, this husband, this, this bishop, um, he's the overseer, the, per, the pastor. He's not going to do this by himself. Um, we have our pastor's wife with us tonight. Sandra, hello there. <clears throat> it's good to have you with us. But it's it's not him by himself doing this, right? It's a team. It's one flesh working together. And that's where it, that's where it is. So um I, I, I was thinking uh I was thinking about this and there's so many people that have these ideas and uh, uh about uh you know raising kids, how to, how to do it. Is there's this magic formula. If you do this, 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 this and you're good. You're golden. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to stand here and tell you. I call. That's. I don't know about that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I've. I've lived too long. I've seen too many things. I've seen too many good people raise too many kids, and it's God's will. Some. Some do. Some don't. Some. Some come. Some come through. Some don't. Um, you think we have. We have examples in the Bible. Think of. Think of Adam and Eve, right? Cain and Abel. There was no outside influences. There was no whatever. And one did what God wanted. One didn't. You know, how do you explain that? You know, uh, it's God's will. It, it just, everyone has a choice, especially when you have an adult kid. Adult kids, I don't know. You can't control them anymore. You train them. You train them when they're young. You do the best you can. Uh, certainly, now certainly, uh, there, God gives us an advantage. Um, we have we have God's word. We can pour into them God's word, uh, fill their minds with God's word, truth. We can give our kids an advantage over over the kids in the world that are just getting this nonsense of preached and preached, you know, poured into them. We can we can certainly do that, and certainly we can create an atmosphere where it's easy for the kids to be brought up in the Lord. And that I think that is the goal. I think that's the goal right there is to, is to, is to create in our home in our family hey this is the way you should walk right walk ye in it I think that's where that's where we're at so I think we're just gonna I think we're just gonna stop right here for tonight it's a little short but uh next week we'll, we'll keep going um on th- in this verse and then there's then there's things that we're gonna try to implant into our kids there's six things I got that to, to put into your kids life that you're, you're trying to transfer into their things, but raising kids, um, it's a it's a it's it's a wonderful thing. Family the, on this earth, outside of our salvation, what better is there? What better thing is there to have a family? And you guys, God has given you a wife. The Bible says God's given you a wife. He's given you a good thing, and it's a wonderful thing to have a family. Base it on God's word. That's where we need to be, for sure. That's it.